Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Swati. And I'm Jacques from the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. Ebola has been in the news a lot lately. So let's look at how sequencing has helped us understand more about the disease and the virus. Did you know that people with Newman Pick disease cannot get Ebola? I really didn't know that. That's pretty interesting, but, but tell me a bit about it. How did they figure that out? I know that Neiman Pick is a little bit storage disorder. Yeah, but it, it's true. It's, um, but in a paper by Caret, they used the genome-wide gene trap screen to identify host factors required for the Ebola to enter into human cells. Okay, and I think in the paper with the gene trap screen, you create insertion sites by infecting a cell line. You can then PCR and sequence the insertion sites in millions of cells and compare those sequences with the reference genome to find the insertion location. That's pretty neat. That's exactly what they did. It's um, and they found that the human Newman pick C1 cholesterol transporter appears to be essential for Ebola virus infection. And fibroblasts infec infected um, and derived from human Newman pick uh, C1 disease patients, they are resistant. Mm -hmm. So um, that is a nice way to double check that uh, it really is a, a, a good, um, you know, a reporter. So, um, but they also found that. Um, it's these those exact same cells are um, resistant to Marburg virus, but they're susceptible to all the regular other viruses that they take. And tested. honestly, I think that makes sense because both Ebola and Marburg are closely related, um, and so are the both both filoviruses as well. The, so. the, yeah, the, the, they're both filoviruses, and Ebola is an RNA virus, and RNA viruses evolved really rapidly, and that's probably due to the error-prone RNA polymerase. So it's important to find these critical conserved points so that you can target them. Exactly. Um, if Ebola is, you know, from what I know, is carried by bats, and the virus is so lethal to humans, we've we've you know heard so much about it in the news and and everything. Why doesn't it kill the bats? <laughs> yeah, it's it's true. Um, it's researchers have uh, recently screened bats with next gen sequencing, and they found that bats, uh, you know, carry a vast yeah. array of viruses, uh, including serious ones like SARS coronavirus, Nipah virus, Hendra virus, Ebola virus. You know, the list just goes on and on. And um, there's a really very good review by Smith and Wang that covers the subject. And you know, viruses, especially filo filoviruses, are estimated to be tens and thousands of millions of years old. So they're pretty old. <laughs> Been around you know, and that is part of the story because rats, are, uh, <laughs> bats are actually av amongst the most ancient mammals, um, and they, their extensive subspeciation occurred, um, you know, around about the uh, before most, uh, you know, mammals, mm -hmm. and um, so they they have adapted to the virus and the virus have adapted to them. So the, um, inside the host, the virus doesn't evolve really rapidly yeah. and, and also um, they don't show any symptoms when they carry these viruses. I mean, if you think about it, it's in the virus's interest to keep the host alive. You know, that's, that must be the motto of, of a good <laughs> virus. And um, it's true, because if the host is dead, then you're not going anywhere no, if no, you're no, a no, virus. No, 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 going anywhere. So, um, but it, it really becomes a problem when these viruses jump between species. It's, it's a zoonosis. And um, in humans, we haven't really des developed defenses against these viruses um, because we're not normally exposed to them. So, sure. um, and conversely, we put a lot of pressure on these viruses by attacking them with our immune systems. So the, the virus is under pressure to evolve really, really quickly. And, and the good thing there is that it, it tends to be self-limiting um, uh, in a way because, because the viruses e evolve so quickly, sooner or later they become less uh, virulent. Right, and you know, with human activity increasingly overlapping animal habitats, there's no doubt that zoonotic viruses will continue to emerge. Approximately 75% of emerging infectious diseases are zoonosis. Yeah, but fortunately, awareness and education can be really effective in, in preventing outbreaks. You know, simple things like protective clothing, mm. washing your hands, making sure your bats are well cooked, you know. Don't tell me that's bad. <laughs> I, I, can, I can even see the wing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't even cut the head off. So. <laughs> you know, 
bats are unique creatures and they're vital to our ecosystem. So it is critical that we coexist with them. Not necessarily at the dinner table, but it is it is it is it is a good good thing that we do. You know that's absolutely true. <laughs> it's um, but really if you think about it, it's all about monitoring and prevention. The use of new technologies such as high throughput sequencing, multiple serological tests, they should all be in integral parts of this effort to increase our ability to um, look for pre-emerging uh, monitoring and uh, monitoring of these uh, zoonotic pathogens. Exactly, and this along with gene trap sequencing to understand the mechanism of viral infection gives us powerful tools against these diseases. Yeah, but that's, that's it for today. It's an ongoing story and um, I'm sure we'll hear some more about it. But thank you for tuning into our show today. Please feel free to reach out to us with questions, thoughts, suggestions, concerns, or any feedback. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you and have a great day. Bye. Bye.